So I gave him forty dollars for the engine transmission and forty one dollars for the cab. <laughs> well, now we can show him what a forty one dollar cab looks like. Yeah, let's go show but him what a forty one dollar cab looks. What's like. crazy is I ran the Marty report on it. I sent it to you. Obviously, nineteen sixty nine F twenty six. They only made five hundred and twenty four of these trucks ever. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the show, Ford era. We are in Texas. We got gold dust. We're on road trip, and uh, this is gonna be a fun day. Right. All right, guys, so we've been cruising for like an hour or so, and the sun's coming up, and it looks beautiful. Truck's driving good, no complaints, and uh, we're just making way. So we just made it through uh, LaGrange, Texas, and they said the historic downtown is coming up, so I figured, get the camera out, and let's show you guys. So. I don't record every single part of my road trips, but for me, I really love driving through all the small towns. Every time I go to a gas station and somebody starts talking to me, and like that's what I think is super cool. And seeing all these old buildings, and just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see what our country is and what all we have. I mean, you know, I'm used to just seeing my area, and then every time I go out of it, I'm just amazed. What up, dude? How you doing? Good. I think I've seen every single cow in the state of Texas. There's a few cows around here. <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit different than Miami, isn't it? Dude, this is beautiful. You brought the wind with you, though. I mean, at least it's not raining. Yeah. I will take Hopefully that. they can hear us, because usually when it's windy, it means the mics aren't good. Yeah. I wasn't expecting you like this, dude. Yeah. Dude, how are you? I'm good. Dude, this is nice. How was the drive? Uh, It made it. They made it? Yeah, I'm just in my head now because there's a bunch of leaks and got that sound that I sent you the video on for the... Ver yeah. I don't know what the heck that is, but, is you know. Is it like repetitive? Yeah. Really? I think it's something in the transmission, but on the way home, I'm going to the transmission place, so we'll figure it out. Yeah. Send it. six gears. It does. You only need five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dude. Okay. What's weird? I am so excited to check out all your junk. Yeah, but look at this. I don't understand. I buy a crew cab bump side <laughs> and I rubbed it and I said, where's Ford Era? And all of a sudden you Boom. blew up in my driveway. Wait, so you just told them why I'm here. Oh. Damn it. Wait, it's okay. Flip that. Flip that. Yeah. You want to see that first? I mean, or should we, should we tell the them? The should we tell them what it is and then not show it to them so it's even worse? Let's do that. All right. So basically... This is how it started. This was a 66 Mustang at one time. This was? This yeah. trailer? Oh, all, no, all this oh boy. So, power tour project right here, right up front. This year? This year. Oh, bro, you're working hard. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least. This car, when I got it, actually, let me tell you, I bought this car like 17 years ago. That's all I had. 17 years ago? It was, I was a young, dumb <laughs> Nothing's changed, huh? Yeah. This whole <laughs> panel was laid over. The car was rolled or something. Oh. And it was one of those ambitious projects. And I was like, I got to do it. Old enough now, it's still dumb. So I'm doing it. <laughs> Hell yeah. So what year? 66 Fastback. And it's the actual A-code four-valve car. Really? Yes. Wow. It has a little value to it, but it's more sentimental to me. But this is a ton of work. Well, I want to hear. I've been working on it for like four weeks. I've seen when you started digging into yeah. it, but I didn't know you were trying to get it done for Power Tour. Yeah, Power Tour this year. Dude, that's... Got I mean, a brand new blueprint engine for it. It's ooh. gonna be a five-speedler T5. Keep it pretty what, simple. 302? 302. Nice. It dynoed at like 370, something like that. Oh, that's plenty. Yeah. But the car's not going full restoration. So it's just... Fix the rusty stuff and get it on the road? Fix the stuff make it run. That's Heck yeah. all we're doing. Well, I want to hear all about Tombstone. I've never seen this truck before. <laughs> And I right now, and love I it. Really bad, but we can dig it out probably later on. But yes, Tombstone is a '46 Ford on a 2001 S650 frame and uh, axis. It has a 12 valve from a I can't remember what year it was, but from a Peterbilt. 
Oh, it's, really? It's not like a. It's industrial. It's industrial. So it's. So it's pea pumped and yeah. everything. And all Is that it painted stuff. tan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah usually the industrial ones are tan. And actually, the truck I got it from, it's a, it was. Uh, the engine blew up. And it was a brand new remanufactured from Cummins engine. Oh, nice. 2,000 miles on it. Wow. So, dude, I open it up. I'm talking brand new. Wow. Brand new. Like, you can pull a dipstick on right now, and it's not even black. That's it, awesome. It's the weirdest thing. Where did the truck itself, like the cab, come from? Uh, I dug it out of the woods in, I want to say, a San Marcus. And dude, the patina is insane. It's, it's and it's crazy how not rusty it is. The only thing I had to fix was that one cap corner on the other side. Okay. That, that's the only thing I did. Dude, I just love like how you set it up. Like the wheels and tires are just so perfect. And this is actually the original uh, blade bumper and everything for it. <laughs> it had a tree going through it. When we cut that tree, the whole truck like rock board. And oh all that stuff wow! It has a big worm winch, uh, the worm style winch on there. I don't have the cables bound up somewhere. <laughs> and then I am upset. Obviously. I We'll talk about the F100, which there's plenty to talk about, but yeah. golly, the yeah. Fairlane 500. Yes, she's a beauty. Oh, I love this thing. Oh, okay. Now we got a nice breeze. Yeah, now we got a nice breeze. As you can see, the on it. Yep. So what's the story on this 57? Uh, we got it, I want to say last year. This one we took on Power Tour last year. Yep. And you saw it on Power Tour. And, Coyote uh, swapped. It Hell was yeah. our full family hauler, but then we had another one. And now we all don't fit. But that's when the ambulance comes in that's in the paint booth. Heck yeah. So... And you were, are you trying to still sell this or that was just yeah, to me? Yeah, still for sale. I mean, it's, it's for sale, but it's not something like we're pushing. It's not on incredibly. sale. Yeah, it's not something we're not pushing incredibly hard. We hop in and we drive it and stuff. Being for sale, I should probably clean it more, but I'm one of those people I drive like everything I own. Hmm. Like, I drive everything. Yeah, I know exactly how that goes. Yeah. Can't afford to not drive them. Yeah, and then people are like, why don't you clean it? It's like, dude, I drive it all the time. It just yeah. gets It'll dirty. get dirty. It just gets dirty all the time. Man, we got to pop the hood for them. They need to see how a coyote fits in this yeah. bad girl. Oh, it's, it's reverse open. Ah. It's a tight squeeze, that's for sure. Yeah, it's not I mean, it fits in there. It fits in there. I actually had to cut the core support and move the radiator forward like an inch or so to clear the uh, get better clearance for fans and everything because I had no room for fans, hmm. none. And then what's crazy is whenever I got it, everybody was like, oh, Coyote won't fit, Coyote won't fit, like all the 57 enthusiasts. All I did was take the, I used uh, GT Mustang uh, swap motor mounts mm -hmm. and then I slotted the factory K-member motor mounts sat right in really i mean it sat right i had to build my own headers <laughs> right but other than that it sat and right the in. steering and everything uh the steering originally did work but then i built a rack of pinion setup for okay. the 60s mustang nice. i like 60s mustang so i know a lot of the parts there so. you go that's what hot rodding is yeah. i mean at the end of the day finding a part that's supposed to fit is different than hey i made this fit yeah. you so know the, it fits it's a uh flaming river rack and pinion setup for a 60s 66 mustang and then outer tie rods to a Granada. I just found the pitch and everything. Yeah, that the right fit, size. And then it all went on and it's a perfect fit. Nice. And then I took the factory column and modified the bottom and everything. So that's all that. But yeah, we'll move this out. And then I'll get the... Uh, I'll let the... I had to change the t extension housing seal on it. Well, now we get the hair a cold start. get a property like this i'm so jealous of your property this is awesome how big is it uh 
two and a half acres, I think is what it is. That's manageable. Oh, I hate mowing. <laughs> I hate mowing. <laughs> How big is the shop? It's a uh, 45 60. Nice. Never seen it. And I've been itching because I've, I mean, this is how I got into everything was unibodies. Like, unibodies are what made me a Ford guy. And, and everybody thought I was weird when I was looking for a unibody. I was like, I want a long bed. They're like, why do you want a long bed? I was like, I just want one. My first truck was a 61 red long bed. I love one. It had a 300 and a three on the tree. Yeah. And when I bought it, I thought it was automatic until I hopped in it and I'm like, why can't I put it in gear? And the guy starts laughing at me and he's like, you don't know how to drive stick shift? I'm like, I know how to drive stick shift. I just didn't, yeah, I never yeah, even yeah, knew yeah. that they made a column thing, you know, Miami boy. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah, so this is a, a 63 on a 07 uh, police interceptor chassis. I mean, and it's a full chassis swap. It's a full chassis Did swap. Did you do the firewall and all or just? No, okay. so, uh, it's all factory firewall for the F100. These are factory. This is all powder coated. Oh, nice. Instead of paint, I was like, man, I'm gonna powder coat everything. And then uh, I did a Mustang throttle body and set up to turn everything this way so I can put a Mustang supercharger and stuff on it. Yep, same thing the guys at the Hot Rod Garage did when they put their, they did their setup. Yeah, not not is, in a unibody, but. This is actually like, I mean, the full breakdown of the truck is actually a pretty close to what they did really, but in a unibody. Like, yeah. I mean, Everything I had to do the supercharger to make it work on the Crown Vic engine and everything, exact same thing. You had to drill a hole out, do all those types of little things. But it's all on a Holley Terminator X, all that stuff, AEM injectors. We had to turn the power down because come to find out, I didn't know this, the actual Crown Vic uh, balancer is bigger, hmm. so it overdrives the supercharger. Really? So it's supposed to actually make like nine pounds. This was making like 13, 14 at peak. Oh, poor baby. Of course, it is. <laughs> and, and on top of that, we don't have an intercooler on it. Uh, so yeah. my air temps, just through I mean, the roof. Just overdriving like that, I mean, it skyrocketed. So we're only running like six, seven degrees of timing in this thing right now, and it's making 340. Nice. So, like, if I put on like EA5, put an intercooler, it would probably make 450, 500, but it's not going to lift. I love the setup, lift. dude. And so. We leave it. We leave it turned down, and we just blow the tires off with it. So it's just one of those things. I love it. What wheels and tires did you run? Because these look really cool. They are the legendary series. I want to say LW20. I think is what it is. Nice. I like, I like that they made it. There's a little bit of a lip on it because usually yeah. you can't find you know yeah, yeah, wheels yeah. that you could actually put a lip on. And the other thing is, is like I had to roll the back. To fit the rear, because obviously right. you know what the crowd looks like. It's so yeah, wide. Yeah, it's super wide. But what I did, I rolled it from here. Oh I mean, it's tight, dude. but it, it's a watts link. What do you mean? That thing rubs. definitely rubs. Right here, for sure. They don't. It, what, you're crazy. I promise it does. No, it has to. What do you look. mean? This is. I can't even fit my finger in here. But look at the tire. There's yeah. nothing. She never rubs. Look. Wow. She doesn't. And she doesn't rub. That's crazy. The only time it rubbed... Dude, that's crazy. It rubbed on this side. Uh, I loaded the back down. Okay. And it squatted so far. That's how far it has to go till it rubs. Oh, this is a rub mark. Yeah, that's a that's rub mark. That's hilarious. So that's well, why... Well, you know what you might want to do just by looking at it? They sell adjustable rear control arms. Uh -huh. I think you should move your rear wheel a tiny bit forward and then it would help because then you wouldn't be so close to this edge. But I guess if it's not rubbed... There you go. That's why I got these. Hell yeah. Is, these are super nice. You just yeah, smush them inside the coil. Uh, that's why the cover and all that stuff's off right now. Okay. Stuff, I'm going to put these in. Because, I mean, the only time it ever rubs, ever, is when I put a bunch of weight in the back. Yeah. And I had uh, I had a Coyote in the, all the way in the back and stuff. So, I mean, it was a ton of weight back here. Being a long bed, it was kind of one of those things. Yeah. And uh, I was hauling, or I had my, uh, my Honda the razor swap honda i had it on the trailer on the back of it oh yeah and it wasn't rubbing but i was like ah, i need to do something before it does but yeah that's that's how tight it is Damn. everybody that sees this truck they're like i don't see how those wheels fit that's you know? wild they, they fit well now that i know that i might have to order these same wheels for black sheep because like i said i had to roll it but 
All I did was roll the lid. Yeah. And then I took this, I started from here to here, and you can see where I rolled it. And it you did a great job. It fit. And then that's actually the factory seat. Okay. I had it redone and bolstered and everything. Dude, that looks beautiful. It With has a double AC. diamond? Yeah. It has AC, it has everything. Custom is classic a instruments, gauge, all that stuff. I love the way it's, the cold start on this thing is terrible. Though. Oh yeah, I love that wine. Heck yeah. And then this is the corner of never-ending projects, huh? So, so this is actually my old car. Okay. And I sold this to a buddy of mine and then uh, they wanted to go through and do all the paint. So I painted the, the engine bay. We're gonna paint the body and all that stuff. But this one, this is actually, and it makes me sad because I bought this car because it was an original 66 Mustang, true legitimate barn find. I pulled it out of a barn, like falling over and everything. Look at the interior of this car. Gosh. Like, that's, yeah, that's... the only tear in the seat. Original headliner, original seat, original door panels, everything. Original dash, all of it. And then they got it, and I was like, and they're like, I want to paint it. And I'm like, I really don't want to paint that car. <laughs> and it's at the end of the day, I sold it to them. Yeah, it's his car, car now. want to paint it, we'll paint it. I have that same, I just, it wasn't my truck, but a buddy of mine reached out to me. He's like, hey, I really want to find, like, the best F600. Yeah. Well, I found him the best one, and it's got the craziest patina. Literally, like, a dream patina. And, he, and he's painting it. Oh. And I'm like, dude, just, like, please do all the work to it. And then, like, because he's like, it's got a little bit of rust, got a little bit of this. I want to make it custom. But I'm like, do all of that. Match the patina. And then if you really hate the patina, paint it then. Yep. But you can never go back. No, yeah, you can't go backwards. And it's not like this part right here. This is my 29 Model A. Yeah. Uh, this was actually my very first like huge build, and it's, it's shoved off in the corner. I know. I just love that you put a Ford in a Ford because yes. most of the time that's not how that goes. And it's all uh, Holly EFI. This has a Dominator in it. it has a, Holly, a 12 inch Pro Dash. I mean, it has really. Yeah, it has everything. And uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people they're like, you put a Pro Dash in there. I love that. Me and my wife, we did the interior. She did the seat. She did all the piping. We put so many miles on this car, it's crazy. Man, See, it's, it's got a big pro dash, everything in it. That's uh, awesome. The, uh, I bought this car from the family that bought this car new. No way. Yes. Out here in Texas? Out here in Texas. That is and, awesome. Uh, what's crazy is when I got the title to it, it was still the original, uh, they called it wax film. It had the wax film on there still. It was still original title everything. It was so old and everything that we actually had the VIN and everything had to be verified by like state troopers. And wow. Stuff. So, like it was it was old. That's the so original cool. sale price of this car was bought out of uh, Quero, Texas. The paper showed $419. Damn. Then I got all the stuff for when they painted it red, <laughs> filled in the roof. They did all the stuff. It was 100% original car other than painted red and filled in the roof when I got it. I mean, interior. And it's all. cool though that they did the roof like oh, that. Oh yeah. Because that's just old school hot rod. You can tell they let it all that stuff. Oh yeah. In there. And it's just Dude. a gal. It's like a sheet of galvanized. That's all it is. The patina and is I, just yeah. the coolest. Other than the, the dust and like mm. the hood's usually on it. I don't have the hood on it right now. But uh, when I got it, they're like, "What are you gonna do with it?" I was like, "I'm gonna make it a hot rod." They're like, "Yes, <laughs> take it." And I'm like, "Okay." So they are. What'd you get for it? Uh. Man, it's been a long time. I want to say I paid like four thousand for it, okay. five hundred, something like that. And the other thing is, a lot of people learn about me. I like the weird stuff. It's a four door. I like long beds. Four door. I like these weird things. And everybody's like, "Oh, you're a high rod a four door." And I'm like, "Yeah." And then I built it. They're like, "I love that. It's a four door." <laughs> I'm like, okay, "Whatever, whatever." And then this one seems like, uh, I mean, this is the most serious project, but yes. also the longest. Yes, this is my very long term project. Uh, it's. 
This is my car. Everybody has that car that like it has to be right. Yeah, the it dream car. Certain, yes, it has to be a certain way. The whole chassis is all powder coated. It has a DeSoto 330 Hemi. This is EFI as well. Uh, this is all powder. What's crazy is this is powder coat. This is powder coat. The engine is actually painted. Nice. Uh, the valve covers are powder coat. This is paint. Uh, it has a T5. Transmission's painted. The four links done. It's all on hydraulics. It's not air. Really? Yeah. So it, it literally, this thing is the definition of lace frame. Uh, it used to be a four-door sedan. Damn. So it's been chopped and converted into a three-window coupe by the Minguez twins out of uh, California. And I hand-built all the floor. I built the firewall in it. It's clipped with a Camaro front clip. I mean, it's just... This is... This is the long term. Everybody wants me to finish this car, but it's that car that, I mean, you know, you want it a certain way, you want it right, so you. And there's no rush because, yes. I'm, how old are you now? 33. Right. And yeah, I, I don't think you're dying for at least, like, what, 50 more years minimum? Uh, probably 10. 10? That's yeah, it? I no. I a mask. Ah. Uh, <laughs> do you paint with a, hel with a mask? Yeah, I wear a mask when I paint. I mean, maybe 15. Yeah. So, you know, you got plenty of time to finish it is all I'm oh, getting yeah. at. Yeah, that's my... I was actually building that for Power Tour this year. And then I started going through the stuff and you start doing... You don't want to half-ass it. Yeah, I, I wasn't... I wouldn't say I was half-assing it, but like, I want this a certain way. So I was like, well, I can't do that right now, so I'm going to do this. And then I'm like, well, I'm very... Yeah, I'm sacrificing. what I wanted to do originally. And I decided at the end of the day, I was like, I'm not giving that up. That's really smart. I want, I want the car a certain way, so that's what I'm doing. And the car's gonna be painted the same green and everything. I already got a guy, actually, a guy that did see. He already, uh, I already talked to him about doing the whole interior and stuff. Nice. So I wanted a certain way, so that's when I came back to that and I was like, "You're up. We're building you." And we decided that last minute. And like I said, I've only been working on that for. Is the back seat weeks. comfy in there? In where? In the Mustang. Or are you gonna no, take two vehicles? No, it is not comfortable. It's just gonna be me and my friend Pablo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not taking the kids. Yeah. So next year we're building the ambulance for Power Tour. Or something else. Or something else, but probably be the ambulance. We need to now start telling the story of how you ended up with a 1969 F26 crew cab for $41. Yeah, let's go take a look at it. No, no, no. Let's not show them the truck yet. Let's just tell them the story first. So I was at work the other day, and I had a buddy reach out to me and said, hey, I know somebody with a truck. They're taking it apart. I said, okay. I said, well, what is it? They're like, oh, it's a crew cab for it. And I was like, I, I was thinking like 90s, you know, something like Yeah, some that. POS. Just, yeah, just something. And, and he was like, I know you like them. And I'm like, ah, I ain't worried about it. And then I said, I was like, you know what? Send, shoot me over a picture. So he shot me a picture. And it was that picture I showed you where it was like a monster truck. It's on the like, screen right now. So you could explain to them what they're looking at. Yeah, so it's back in, down here where we live. We're in South Texas. You have a few families around here called the O'Connors, the Hewitts, and the uh, Brandons. They own... You, if you ever really listen to country music, you'll hear them mention. So they own half of South Texas, actually probably all of it. <laughs> but uh, they all bought these. They all bought a truck similar, brand new, showroom floors. And there's a guy local here. They took them the trucks and they made them those monster trucks from day one. Damn. They used them for hunting. That's what they were using. Yeah, literally that's hunting why, rigs. That's why at the end of the day, I guess that's why it's such a high level truck in the trim package area. Because yeah. Because. They, they didn't care. They're like, I don't want to buy this one to do it. I want this one to do it. So fast forward all these years, uh, the guy that got it, he just wanted the frame and the tires and that. I think they're five-ton axles, they said. Mm. They just wanted the axles. So long story short, they sent me a picture. I called him, I was like, dude. I'm like, yeah, I want that truck. I was like, how much you want for it? And he's like, ah, not much. And I'm like, okay, well, what's not much? He was like, I'm over here, blah, blah, blah. I said, dude, I'm like, 30 minutes away and he was like okay he said show up with a trailer and i was like all right he said i'm about to stick the forks to the door i said do not stick the forks to the door <laughs> do not do that so i show up we're looking at it and he was like you want it i was like yeah he goes how much you give me for it i was like i was like man you call me spare a moment i was like he's like i'm gonna scrap all this stuff and i was like i got 81 bucks on me and he's like Sold. And 81 like, bucks. 81 bucks. <laughs> so I gave him $40 for the engine transmission and $41 for the cab. 
<laughs> well, now we can show them what a $41 yeah. cab looks like. Yeah, let's go show but them what a $41 cab looks what's like. What's crazy is I ran the Marty report on it. I sent it to you. Obviously, 1969 F26, they only made 524 of these trucks ever. And this one is one of three with one these exact three. color combos. It's Norway green, custom cab. Dude, I will read over the Marty report. I just, obviously, I'm recording on my phone, so I can't pull it up at the same time. But this thing is toast. Yes. Like, toast. But it's like I told you, what's crazy is down yonder way, <laughs> look how solid this thing is, though. The bottom of, like, the actual bottom of the doors, all that stuff, look at that. You know what's really funny? I own another crew cab that's the opposite. From here down, there's nothing left, but the top of it's perfect, and it's a bump side. And I, what I think did it in for this roof is it it had that giant rack yeah so I all mean, the water all, just all the water just came down on it for sure but down i mean like when i had it lifted up my forklift there's nothing wrong with the floor of this thing yeah nothing the firewall solid oh, what's crazy is, dude like this all of this is like almost you almost never see it i mean here you guys look boom look did you did you hear that <laughs> like it's crazy to me. Look at the look at the oil pressure gauge and all that stuff they put in here. Huh? I've never seen that. A square one. Yeah. That's cool. And so like this, this thing, this had, thing is roached. Yeah. This thing had <laughs> hydraulic steering, hydraulic brake. I mean, look at that door though. <laughs> you don't gotta keep selling me. <laughs> we already made a deal. Yeah, but it's crazy. Like, Dude, this is. Oh my gosh. That wasn't like that until they got a hold of it. Okay. They, I don't know what they did, but whenever they originally sent me the picture, mm -hmm. that wasn't like that. Well, the problem is these hoods rust right here, so it's uh, separated. I'm, I bet it just separated. Yeah, and so from a brand new truck, they cut the factory fenders and they welded those big running boards and all that stuff all the way down it to the bed. I mean, they did it to a brand new truck when they did this. I mean, Crazy. we've been to LST. I I've been to LST. You've seen what people do to brand spanking new Super Duties now. I've got friends. You go buy a brand spanking new Super Duty and then drop a hundred grand into it and take it to SEMA, take it to LST, make a mud truck. So yeah, that's like somebody's like, hey, put a rock lights on my new Super Duty. I'm like, nah, hell no. I ain't drilling a hole in that thing. Well, you don't need to. I'll show you the rock lights I have on Gold Dust. They're all magnetic. Oh, you have an okay. aluminum truck, though. Yeah, it's well, aluminum. Well, a magnetic frame. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Dude, I still can't believe it. So you guys are probably like, what are, what am I gonna do with an extremely cool. rusted out cab? Look at it. Should I tell them what we're gonna do with it or I'm gonna do with it? Yes, absolutely. So I've, I've already introduced that this year for SEMA, I'm building Clyde, which is a 1969 F100 single cab short bed that I'm doing full carbon fiber. And the guys at Brothers Carbon up in Wisconsin are doing it. Well, after we finish that, and one day when I make some more money, we're gonna make this full carbon fiber. Then I'm gonna have a 69 single cab short bed, full carbon, and a 69 F26 full carbon. Still got the original keys. Got the keys with it, man. Start her up. It don't start. Make the same sounds you think it might have sounded like, though. What do you it think? Had that, a what do you? Sixty in it, so it was probably clunking. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it probably had a rod knock with the three sixty. It definitely did, and I'm sure that the exhaust manifolds were leaking like they always do. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this thing crazy so when you hit me up what were you thinking i just want to know what year it was and then next thing i know you're at my house because i sent you a picture of it <laughs> well i was like i'm not letting this go yeah. it's i mean out of 524 of these so there can't be that many left I, when i build something when it comes to to numbers to what it is and stuff it's not a big deal to me right it's, it's not uh, I build it for what I like and stuff because actually what's in there, there's only one of five ever built in the world. Really? And that's the, and that's the only known uh, running driving one still. And I'm about to take it apart. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, numbers don't matter to me. Yep. And the numbers of this, I can see the significance of it. So. And you got a better bump crew out of it because I'm trading you a complete bump crew i mean it's rusty ish you're out of your mind. i mean i am out of my mind but when this is finished this will be like this will be the nicest 69 bump crew f26 so, so as i guess because i don't know numbers as it as the years go on they made more obviously. yeah yeah so gold dust gold dust not a factory four by four but they made over 2,000 of them in 1970 oh so and it then jumps big yeah time. and then in 71 oh, wow. 
Well, they made they made plenty of of two wheel drive 69s. Yep. It's just the four by four, so you to make that many. And then 68, even less. And then so far, nobody has ever found a 67. I might have, but nobody believes me that I found one. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a bunch of dirt in here. Yeah, we might need to clean her out. Yeah, that's South Texas for you. What are those? Just literally dirt balls? Yeah, so what? Uh, so a lot of people are scared of bees. Uh, we call them dirt daubers, and they make these little nests and stuff, but they get they catch spiders and stuff. Okay. So I'm like, you're my friend. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't I, like... I'd rather have a bee that doesn't sting or anything... Than spiders. Than a spider. Yeah. So if it catches a spider, totally cool with it. There we go. They can hang out all they want. So is this the Mustang you're cutting apart? Yeah, that's the parts car. That car is actually from Alaska. <laughs> oh, wow. So they had this car, res keyword, restored in yeah? Alaska. That's a great restoration. Yeah. Oh, look look at that down there. Like little galvanized sheet metal screws and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fantastic restoration in Alaska. No offense to anybody that's in Alaska. I mean, I'm saying? sure there's good shops there too. I'm sure there is. Just not this one. Whoever did this one. <laughs> They ain't him. Golly. Uh, yeah, but they drove it all the way down here to visit somebody and over in El Campo, Texas, and got T-boned. Uh, and it got left here. It still has Alaskan plates on it, actually. Hmm. Or, uh, yeah, see, it's still 93. Alaskan plates from 93. That's funny. They drove all the way south Texas to get rich. Yeah. <laughs> so, you said one of five. Yes, one of five known... Uh, supposedly there are five built, but I've only seen two other ones. And people like to argue this bag. This is a 1944. And it freaks people out because they're like, oh no, the war era, nobody was building nothing. No, they weren't building civilian vehicles. Right, you still needed ambulances. You still needed ambulances and stuff for the war of and course. everything. So, from my understanding, Dude, this thing I is found, wild. Yeah, this thing is amazing. They uh, they were building these, because actually you can still see the military green where they finally painted over it. Dude, this screams your name. Like if I saw this somewhere, yeah. I would have sent it to you. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Well, I just love when the people that, the, that should end up with the vehicles do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is gonna be your family rig forever. You're gonna give it to your boy here's, and he's gonna use it forever. Here's the craziest <laughs> thing about this. So, Lucky, my wife, she was like, I want a family vehicle. For the longest time, after I built her tombstone, she's like, I want a crew cab tombstone. And I'm like, good luck. Like, that's not something that exists. You literally have to make that, so good luck. And uh, so finally, she was like, well, since we're selling the Fairlane, she said, I want a 57 wagon Fairlane. I said, I can do that. Yeah. I found one in Kansas. We, and then like two days before, I found this on Marketplace. It had been on there for months, and no I never saw it. Way where they in Kansas? In, no, two hours away in San Antonio. <laughs> so uh, they were the worst pictures ever. Like one of the pictures, all you could see was like that window and this, and then you can only see like this part Dude, of it. This were, glass. It's real edged. I'm you you sure have to figure out a way to save that and oh, make I sure am. not to crack it. I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. Are you gonna try to fix all the rust and the wood and everything? Yes. Okay. So all that stuff's gonna get fixed. But uh, so I found this. And I messaged a guy and he was like, "Oh no, I sold it. Somebody's coming to get it." Blah blah. blah. I said, "Okay." So I tell Lucky, breaks her heart because I I showed her what it was and she's oh. like, "I want that. I want that. I want that." And uh, she said, "Just message him and see." And if you can get a hold of the person that bought it. So I messaged him. He goes, well, they told me they wanted, They haven't came and got it yet. So I still have it. And I was like, okay. And I said, I said, I will pay you asking price and I'll come get it tomorrow. And he reads the message, doesn't reply. So that morning, me and my buddy Pablo, we take off to Kansas. We make it all the way to Dallas, to McKinney. The guy texts me. He said, hey, if you want to come get it today. And you already had a trailer. I already had a trailer. So, but I was... <laughs> Five hours away in Dallas. So I, I, we say, you know what? Screw it. So we eat lunch in Dallas and drive all the way back to San Francisco. I drove 14 hours for this thing. It would be two hours from the house. I was like, ah, oh, man. But it's crazy because I was on my way to buy another car and then he decided to sell this thing. How, what did you have to get for it? Uh, This, I think I gave 3000 Dang. Yeah, I, I feel like I stole it. The original flat. Dude, it was turquoise? So... 
that's the thing. Uh, from the little bit of research and stuff that we found out on it, it was at the Shriners Hospital, and we believe it was at the Shriners Children's Hospital. Okay. And uh, so we think they did all these colorful stuff on To make the kids like happy. Kids and stuff like that. That makes sense. So, original flathead engine runs like a top. I got what? it running and everything. Really? Yeah. So I, now you got a hot rod motor for something else. Yeah. I, I was like, man, now I got to buy me a Model A or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the original fuel pump. What would be funny? is uh if you somehow found like because this would have came in here right yeah, yeah it's original engine transmission drive train everything Man. everything all i did with the in, uh with the carburetor i took it apart original gaffies everything i just blew it all out cleaned it the uh the uh, fuel pump i took it apart i took the diaphragm and i soaked it in some uh some parole to give a little life back to the diaphragm and the rubbers put it back in there it all works wow all works everything dude so what are you going to do on the finish? Are you clearing it or you don't know? Because it's usually when they're this rough, it's kind of it's, it's, iffy. It's very iffy. I, I'm going to have to see what happens because I, mean, I might end up having to paint it, which I really, I know a lot of people don't like to paint it, but I love to paint Well, I could put you in, so like, it's, I love it. do you know Street Machinery up in Ohio? I don't think so. So that's who I use. They are the kings of patina matching. Really? You fix all the rust. Put it in primer, just the spots. Don't blend everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you take it to them, and it's not expensive. They've done. They redid Snickers after I blew it apart. Oh, yeah. And matched all the patina. There's a the original uh, delivery tag of the Coach Conversion Company. It's all up there. It says the delivery date, April of '44, and all that on there. That's so cool. So it, I believe it was built for the military and all that stuff. But once the war ended, so it never made it. So okay. So then it got passed on to civilian use and stuff like that, and that's when it got. Started getting painted all these crazy colors and stuff. Dude, this thing is awesome. I love it. When I got it though, like the roof was like falling in and all kinds of stuff. Like this part was all collapsed. You can see where I went through and tagged in and did all that stuff. Because uh, back in the, during the war era, you weren't supposed to use metal for unnecessary things. So if you can use wood in replacement, you had to use wood. So a lot of the stuff was built with wood. So when you upgrade and fix it, you're gonna add change the wood to metal, or you're gonna yeah, put I'm wood back? Yeah, I'll make it all metal. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll make it all metal. I got a, sh a sheet metal break in there. I can make damn near anything I want out of it. But all they did, all it is, is a fort panel, mm -hmm. and it was done by the Siebert Company. They, you can see where they spliced the roof right here, and all they did is splice it from the door jam, and they just slid it all back. You see, this is the original roof panel section. So this is all original here, and they just added this and they built these door seals. Hmm. The framing of these doors and stuff, they're all wood. That's why I rotted all this stuff out. Yeah. But supposedly, like I said, there's only five of these ever to exist. Did uh, you get the other the door? Bar. Yeah, I have it over there. Okay. Yeah, when, and that's the thing, when I got it, nobody could get on the inside of it, and I was like, it's rotten wood, man. And we just like yanked the door off of it, just so I can get in there and get all this stuff fixed so nothing collapsed and broke any more than it was. But and the transmission what? was jacked up and I got that fixed. I took it all apart and got all the gears back. How are you going to build it? Are you going to lift it or lower it? Or I lower it. Uh, and engine of choice at this moment is a pro-charged Voodoo. That is the engine what? of choice at the moment. Yeah. I mean, that's silly. That's the point. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. That's, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. You yeah. caught me so off guard of pro-charged Voodoo. Yeah. You're not supposed to even add power to those. You can do it that with thing's, the Gen 2 ones. You that can thing's like gonna. Out of them. Yeah, but it's gonna rev at like 15,000 RPM. Yeah. In this. Yeah. And it's for your wife. Yeah. She won't be she able to keep to pass, traction. She likes to pass people. There won't be any traction. Yes. It'll be cool though. It will be crazy. Just like you open the hood and people are gonna be like, uh. I thought you were gonna say like a 7.3 or a 6.7 power stroke or something. No. Well, so I was actually, so this all started because I was going to do a Godzilla. Okay. And then as somebody that's done a Godzilla, at the end of the day, I started doing the math on it. And I'm like, for what it would cost me to do a Godzilla, I can whipple a Gen 2 truck Coyote or something like that. Yeah. At the end of the day, the price wise. You're, right. You're right there in the same and the wow factor's there with it. And then the opportunity came up to get a Pro Charge Voodoo within the range. And I was like. There, yeah. there we go. Yeah, so. Dude, that's going to be bitching. Yeah. I mean, insane. It's not 100% set in stone at the moment, but at the moment, that's the plan. Because I could, at the end of the day, wake up and just be like, you know what, that is way too much. Uh, it's not that. For me, I don't think the motor would go in here comfortably because it wouldn't be a comfy drive. Yeah. But, you know, you could always pull it back out later and do something else. Yeah. 
That's the, the glory of pot riding. Exactly. Do whatever you want. Exactly. So anything else we need to show them on this tour? Uh, I can go get my Honda. Hmm. Have you seen my Honda? I mean, I've seen it. I've never seen it, seen it. I've never seen any of this stuff except for the what, Fairlane. You go stand my gold dust, and I'll bring it around to you. All right. <sighs> this, is, this is awesome. You like my paint booth? I do like your paint booth. <laughs> I like the whole property. So did you build everything on here? Like you had the house built, the shop built, or you yeah, bought it like this? It was all, it was all bare land. Uh, we built the shop first and our house inside of it. We lived in there for about four or five years, and then we built the house. That's awesome love it that is awesome this thing is nuts i still can't believe i got myself a 69 f26 and that's so cool all right so he said stand by gold dust and he's coming around Freaking awesome. Isn't it amazing? This is so awesome. <laughs> Dude, this is great. This thing has broke the internet like a dozen times already. Oh yeah. I love it. It's a uh I don't even remember what year razor. It's a twenty I think a twenty seventeen Razor nine hundred S with a seventy two Honda N six hundred. Body. Dude, this thing is tiny. Where did you even find the body? So I was actually at a junkyard looking for a parts for my Dodge in there. Okay. And I came across it and I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing to you. <laughs> yeah, see, it's all, it's all razor stuff back there. Hell yeah. But everybody's like, oh, you could have restored that. Look how bad this bug like. You're not restoring nothing. No, this thing is so no, trash. No, if he wants one of these, he'll buy one. Yeah. It's like, it's so, it's bad. But yeah, I used the original Honda dash, everything in it. And then I put like the Polaris gauge cluster. I had to make like an extension and stuff. That's this is like my down and dirty, like just get it done. Like whatever you got to do, build. But I did have to do a lot. Yeah. The, the razor I used was wrecked. I had to buy a new frame. I had to narrow the frame. I had to do all kinds of stuff. And then of course the Honda, I had to reinforce because it's so rusted. I had to do it. I had to you do made it happen stuff. though. Yeah. Yeah, I love this thing. That is awesome. Lucky uses it around the yard to like, she, I got a little lawnmower trailer, that one over there, she hooks it up and she like, does everything with her chicken. The funniest thing stuff. was seeing this in the back of the unibody. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, why are my brake lights on? I think my brake pedal switch is uh, not great, let's see. Oh, they're off. Huh, I guess I need to adjust my brake pedal switch or something. Anyway, we're gonna, gonna trade me this for that. This for that? Yeah, for the, for the crew cab. I mean, I'll let you drive it. You see, F25. You can pump them numbers down like that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can pump the numbers down. I love this truck. Thank you. Back seats, uh, I'm in road trip mode. So when I road trip, I put one of my kids' crib mattresses in the back, take the seat out, and then I sleep in the back. Yeah. And then, you know, when you actually have to road trip somewhere, it's the best. And it's just comfy. It's fun. I mean, right now it's giving me issues, but nothing, you know, that we're not going to fix. It's just annoying because it's like, you think you fixed it. And then you go on a road trip and you find 10 more things that weren't wrong with it that now are. I think the last time I saw this thing was in uh, London. Yeah, at uh, Ford Fest. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. We've done a few things since. Nothing too crazy, but uh, yeah, just mostly getting it back to being reliable, which, I mean, I've already driven it like 1,600 miles on this trip, so it's pretty reliable, but... I was like, yeah, you've been, I mean, you've put a bunch of miles on it so far. Oh, yeah. You got cruise control and everything on it? Uh, I have the Dakota cruise control, but it's not wired up because I don't have RPM signal. So everything's there, but it needs RPM signal, and so I don't have like that yet. On that, on that big truck, everybody's like, what's your RPM? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just drive it. Because I have a uh, I have a 4R100 in that. Oh, really? Yeah. And I use a, uh, uh, what is it, a Quick 4? Okay, yeah. To, yep. And 
I use it off of a throttle position sensor. I made, I got one for like a GM. I made my own bracket and all that stuff. Okay. And that's how I shift that truck. Is all nice. Yeah. Well, they good. sell they sell something to make to get RPM. I just never got it and started you know playing with it. But yeah. I I want to pull the twelve valve out. I'm over this. Really. I I don't want to because I'm so invested in it. But yeah, I'm so pissed off with this motor. Really? Yeah. I thought you loved it. I did. I did. <laughs> what had happened was it keeps letting me down. I mean, look, there's not a ton of oil because I turned it off right when I got here. But if I would have ran it for a few more minutes, it, it well, just... It, I mean, the thing is, though, I mean, with oil leaks, all you got to change is the filter. <laughs> you just add oil and change the filter. Like, I mean, it's good to go. I guess. I don't know. I'm just... Self-service. Right now, I'm not going to mess with it because it's like I'm going to make it back to reliable and work on my other projects for the year. Yeah. I don't need to take a truck that's in service, out of service. But this is going to – I mean this is like yours out there. I'm keeping this forever. Yeah. I'm My real thought what I want to do to this is make it back into a two-wheel drive. Really? Lower it all the way back down like a two-wheel drive. Not low, low, but just stock yeah, low yeah. and then make it into a B250. Because you made – you uh, – ooh. Yeah. There you I'm going to weld – the bed. So I I took a, a B100 from Mexico and made it into a real four door and then made the bed longer. And after doing that, I realized it would be way easier to cut the back wall off of this, weld the cabin bed together and then make a roof. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what I want to do because I don't ever want to get rid of gold dust. And I really can't find a bump side B250. Is that two tone? Yeah. Well, factory, the truck was all... Uh, it was all... Um, sandstone beige. Yeah. That's what my, my unibody is. Well, this... I don't think they call it sandstone beige. Uh, this is... It's blanking me. But yeah, it's the same color, basically. But they just changed it for bump sides. But yeah. Uh, and then the story on the color was... The guy that bought this brand new at Ethan Ford in Emmett, Idaho... Uh, he was using it. Loved the truck. And then he got a race car. Mm. And his race car was this color gold. Or he painted it this color gold. Obviously, you got to paint. You got to probably a Mopar if it was this color gold. Maybe, right? I, Mopar's real big into this gold, aren't they? Honestly, like the dusters and all that stuff. I think I never asked him what the race car was, but I should because the guy that I bought it from was his uncle's. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll ask him. But and he basically painted this to match the race car. So when he pulled it, it matched. Um, that was like and then, the absolute seventies, eighties thing. Oh yeah, know. it had a matching trailer, and then. He parked it in like the late 80s and it just sat forever. And then his nephew. Long ago? Yeah. Um, his nephew got into this type of stuff and uh, he swapped it. It was It's on a 96 Ram chassis and that's when I bought it. Um, yeah. So it's a full Ram chassis. And I mean, since I got it, I lifted it four and a half inches. I blew the motor up, put a new motor in. I mean, I, I screwed this truck up. One of my bigger regrets is messing with this truck. Like when Jimmy built it, it was so reliable. The first year that I owned it, I put almost 100,000 miles on it. Golly. Yeah. And then since then, I mean, it's just trials and tribulations. But that's how it goes. Dude, this thing, I love it. I yeah. Do. And then remember I was telling you, magnetic. So look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Let me, there we go. So these are on. Look at that. It's oh, literally that's fancy. Yep. Casey's. They're awesome. Why Cyclones. Hot boy over here. <laughs> Look at that. Well, I have, I, I put rock lights all over. But you can't see them too good during the day, but. Oh, I see it. I see them down there. Yeah. So I, I would say if you don't want to screw any holes into your truck and you want really good lights, that's, that's what I like. Are they all like a, like a plug-in sink type thing? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I didn't have to really do much. Um, I mean, I didn't have to do anything. I just dropped it off to my buddy. He wired it. But, yeah, I don't. It, he didn't seem like it was too difficult. Yeah. I guess I didn't. For some reason, I thought a 12 valve would fit a whole lot. Better? Yeah. No, it fits ah, horribly. It's snug, man. Yeah. And I couldn't even change that back one without... Uh, lifting the cab. So on the on the big truck, uh, I made the center hump in front of the console. It's removable to pull the back valve cover off because it's actually up under the floor in that truck. I mean, because I mean that cab's tiny. Yeah. I mean it's absolutely tiny. And it's funny when people find out there's a 12 valve and they're, they're like, how? How did you fit that? And I'm like, ah, I had to cut a lot. 
yeah no this i mean it fits in there but it's snug and then i mean i had to pin the hood because i couldn't even after i put the big intercooler in it i couldn't put my hood latch down oh, okay so that's why i had to pin the hood which i like it a lot better because i mean you have you driven your unibody and seen how much your hood shakes Mine actually doesn't. No? I'll tell you how I did mine because I always heard about people flying them up. Oh, yeah. So when I adjusted out my front end, uh -huh. I took the actual lever. I don't know if you can still see it. Because everybody talks about how they fly up and everything. Oh, and they I do. see where they drill the hole in the pin and all that. Yep. So all I did, and as you can see, when you try to put this hood down now, it won't. I moved all of I moved this down. I moved this forward. So now you actually you have to, it won't do that on its own. So when it's like that. It's impossible. Is it down? That's it. So what I've done is since you could get your hands in right here. Yeah. I've put pins on the inside and then just pull the pin out right there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's. But it's that works. You have to you have to put some effort and get this hood to come up. So before we were in here, you said this thing basically only knows how to do burnouts. Yeah. Prove it. This? Yeah. Right here? I mean, I don't know. Mm. We, we can move the trucks and stuff. I don't All right, know. guys. So you heard before he said this thing's pretty good at, you know, tire frying. So we moved some stuff around the yard. And uh, looks like we're in for a treat. Are you doing? I hope so. I think your foot slipped. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Dude, this thing rips. Oh man, dude, look how sick that is. Hell yeah, dude. What'd I tell you? <laughs> that is awesome. This thing will annihilate tires. That is yeah. awesome. <laughs> so this is how you get rid of the bugs, right? You you do that, now it's like a bug deterrent. You don't no, have to- No, that's how I rotate my tires. Oh. Get them nice and smooth. Yeah, so I don't have to move to the front, I just do that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Bad service with a smile. Shut well, shop, I think we're going to get into the next video, so let everybody know where they can go to check you out. Simon's Powerhouse on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Links in the description below. There you go. And uh, we're going to have some more fun, so stay tuned for the next video, guys. Yeah, I need new tires now. Yeah, you do. Um, but we're gonna make some more stuff, so if you guys can, make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment below. Let me know what do you think about this, all of this. What do you think about that truck? And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.